Welcome in to this week's trade target video. We're doing things a little bit differently. Myself, Adam, and Andrew are each going to nominate three players that we will either be targeting or trading away from our teams, and we're more so looking at the latter part of the year. So we're in week seven right now, which means we are, after this week, officially halfway through the regular season of fantasy football, but we all know the most important weeks of the year are weeks 15, 16, and 17. That's when you bring the hardware home. So we're going to be looking at the schedules of these specific teams as well as some other factors that we are uh, looking at long-term. So we're going to nominate whether they're being traded away, being traded for, and more importantly, giving you suggestions where we, we think are realistic suggestions that you could offer for a player. So if we're telling you a player that we want to buy, we're also going to give you something that we think might get a deal done. None of that bullshit that you see on whatever websites you guys were using. Fucking um, fantasy count. Was it Dearness Johnson for David Montgomery kind of shit? I thought we weren't slandering other people. That, yeah. Well, I mean. I mean, here's the thing. Like, you, you go look at, like, I'm going to bring up some real trades that happen, and then you put, like, the dumbest trades that no one would ever do. And even if that's 80% of the public leagues, I'm like, I don't want to talk to those people regardless. Fuck them. Sure. <laughs> I mean, those are not the ones you definitely want to talk about. They're, they're the ones you don't want to look at. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with my first nominated player here, and it is my wide receiver one, the Atlanta Falcons, Drake Lund. Now, he's not going to come at a cheap price. I understand that. He's been playing lights out. Kirk Cousins has looked incredible the last you know month of the season. He's come on after uh, that week one debacle of him not being able to move, et cetera. The passing game is starting to work. Like Again, new scheme, new offense, new quarterback, new weapons, whatever. It all needed to mesh together, and it's starting to come together now. And the stretch run in the fantasy playoffs, weeks 15 – the Raiders, Weeks 16, the Giants, Week 17, the Washington Commander. You cannot have a better lineup of teams to throw the ball against. So when I'm looking at the schedule and I'm like, Drake London is a guy that, you know, whoever has him right now after seeing the last three weeks of the season is not going to give him up easily, which is why I would try and go out and trade Tyreek Hill for Drake London right now. Even though Tyreek Hill is going to be a dude that, you know, every week we get closer to Tua returning, Tyreek Hill is probably going to be more and more glued to the person's lineup. I think the name value of Tyreek Hill is going to be enough to push that trade over. And I think most of the suggestions that we'll make today are kind of like, these are trades that I think are doable, relatively fair from both sides. If you need to add in a secondary piece to like get it over the hump or get it over the hill, that's what we would suggest. Because with Hill, when I look at Hill, one, obviously there's optimism for Tua, but things can go wrong very quickly. If he has concussion symptoms next week, he's back probably on the IR again. If he takes a big hit to the head at any point from weeks 8 through 12, he's out for the rest of the season. No doubt about it. He can't have another concussion there. Tua's also a dude that struggles at crazy levels against really strong defenses in December when it's cold, all that kind of stuff. And the Miami schedule over the last six weeks of the season, New England, Green Bay, New York Jets, Houston, San Francisco, Cleveland. Now, some of those are worse defenses than we anticipated in the beginning of the year, but at Houston, San Francisco, at Cleveland, most of those teams are dudes that have really good shadow corners. So you're talking about Christian Gonzalez, Jair Alexander, Sauce Gardner, Derek Stingley, Denzel Ward. Like, that's not an easy matchup of players to go against. So when I think about, like, set it and forget it, guys, Drake London in those matchups is, like, no doubt about it. He's someone I want to go for, and I'll, I'll pay a top price I for. I think I would maybe wait after they play Seattle. Like, I this week, I feel like... He, he could have on a bad game, but Seattle's got a good defense. Yeah, good cornerback. Like right now, like no matter what, you're gonna have to pay a premium for Drake. But I do think if there's any type of discount, it's more likely to come after Week Seven than before. I, I think that's probably a good call too, because after this week, Tua probably has more value in the trade market. Yeah. And at that point, maybe the trade gets done easier. Yeah. Now what if he has a good game this week against a bad or a good defense? Now does the mean he's up? already like. <clears throat> So expensive. Like, I don't think he could get more pricey. It's just going to be... I agree. And Tyreek's Tyreek's value is kind of insulated right now. Like, Tyreek won't go up or down this week because no one believes that, like, whatever happens this week is what's going to happen when Tua is back, regardless. Right. You can make this trade probably this week or next week. Yeah, like, I I mean, Drake London probably... Let's say he goes out and actually smashes again, which feels like... I know it's only two weeks, but it feels anyway like it's been happening for forever. Yeah. Um... That's only just going to solidify him and probably where he is. Whereas if he has a down week, maybe people start to freak out a little bit again because it's that playoff Honda. schedule you mentioned. Raiders, Giants, Commanders. Like, is there a better one? N- no, probably not. Honestly, for a receiver that's in the top twenty, I bet you no. Yeah. I mean, I got a wide receiver that's got a pretty nice. schedule. Oh, Andrew says he might want to try. It's huh? not. It's not probably not better than Drake London. Let's 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 move then. I don't like the player as much as Drake London, but let's talk a little bit about uh Chris Olave. Of the New Orleans Saints. Now, Mm -hmm. you might get him a lot cheaper than you're getting a guy like Drake London because, one, he has the concussion he's going to miss this week. uh, And also you have the Spencer Rattler 
thing going on right now, which is suppressing Some overall his value. QB uncertainty. Yeah. For so sure. looking ahead, though, playoff schedule: Las Vegas, Washington. You got Jesus. Green Bay. Now Green Bay, they Jair Alexander, but they've been passed upon. Uh, like people are passing on them pretty heavily this year. So I think uh, Chris Olave, he's somebody that you can go in and you can trade for. I think possible targets that I would be comfortable giving up in my leagues to go get Olave. If you move like same wide receiver for wide receiver. T. Higgins, maybe, for a guy like Chris Olave. Mm. T. Higgins has a really tough playoff schedule. You're kind of just swapping a similar type of talent for a better schedule down the road. Dang. If you're looking cross-positionally, it sounds a little bit scary, and you maybe get another piece on the uh, Chris Olave side, but James Cook. James Cook has a really tough Buffalo Bills schedule in the playoffs. Okay. I think he's a guy, too, that if you're looking to maybe just get off of one of your extra running backs and you need to get a wide receiver, that's a guy that I'm giving up. Do you know off the top of your head who James Cook plays against? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I can I can get them for you, though. Yeah, because I'm, I'm curious about that. What's crazy is I, uh, it's funny because I have T. Higgins as my uh, the guy, but I will, I will say I'm really starting to buy into what I'm seeing, but the playoff schedule is a little tougher. I still think he's a buy. Um, it just might not be right now, but I think like if if I was to be able to have Chris Olave, he was one. If I can get a T Higgins deal done, I I think although the playoff schedule is light for him, I, I'm willing to kind of bank on what I'm seeing from the Bengals offense versus the Saints offense. I agree, but I think that's why it's a good suggestion. If you believe in Olave, then suggesting T Higgins as a trade for him is good because I have T Higgins in your idiot league mates, and if Tony put Olave in my inbox, I probably am not. Yeah, that feels uncomfortable. If, yeah, it feels uncomfortable. I'm probably not making that move. The schedule is really, really good. I guess I, I, I have overall just concerns with like who Alave is as a player. Like we know he's a good player, but in terms of fantasy, I don't know that I see like overwhelming upside. I want to look at the he's got one twenty point. Yeah, th- th- yeah. Th- th- this year certainly has not been the year where he's been giving you. Last year he was a little more consistent, but like, like I feel like that overall we still have yet to see that really huge game from Alave too. It? much of a ceiling there like a lot of it like doesn't typically do that i kind of feel like over the last three years like how many how many big big games has he had the biggest thing for me was always that like looking at underlying metrics he has never been a big red zone target guy and he's had Mm -hmm. four touchdowns last year and i just i think for him to jump the drake london what is he doing he's scoring points with all these like in the nfl he's scoring touchdowns so i think that's the upside now i guess the same sentiment you could have too is if you're not an Alave guy, maybe go a little cheaper and maybe you like Shahid. You could do Shahid as well because the same schedule. But I will say to back really. you up though too, like you you said the three playoff games: Washington, Green Bay, Vegas. Yep. Two games prior to that are New York Giants and the Rams. So yeah. you actually have five really Dang. good his, matchups in a row. His second of the half or a second half of the season schedule is really nice. Yeah, no, it's 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 pretty sexy there. I um, think I think if I'm being honest, now this, these deals might not get done, but I think. The overall sentiment of Alave might be soured in your specific league. You probably could try to shoot lower if you what want. About, what about like a, a Chuba? What about one of these running backs that you see, like a Chuba or a Jordan Mason? What about a Swift? I mean, I would do the Chuba one. I would do. Quick. You would take. I would trade Chuba for Alave. Yeah. 100%. I would sell my Jordan Mason for Alave right now, too. Okay. Jordan Mason, I think that's I would. a reasonable share then. Jordan Mason, I would. Chuba, I, sh- I probably should. I don't know if I, I feel. I feel a little more hesitant there. I probably should, but. I feel like Chuba right now is just so ridiculously good, and I'm not sure that Brooks is going to be all that healthy. Yeah. I mean, who knows when he's actually coming back. I feel like they were like, yeah, week five's our target date. Now we're in week seven, and we're like, we're going to open the practice fucking 21-day yeah. window I think, for him. I think yeah. he was activated today. I think like, I just saw news like that. It is late, late, where it is just like weeks 14 on. Like now Chuba's like relevant in the fantasy playoffs. Yeah, which is why like these are kind of risky trades to make, but these are things to think about because – you're not looking at playoff schedules in week like four or five, but now, mm-hmm. you know, you could take advantage of some of the unknown risks kind of in the air. That actually is a good point. I think they're situationally, right? If you're a team that's like in idiot league mates in a division like Nick, where you have no, you have to win every game, I'm not making that trade. But if you're, you have a little cushion and some extra pieces, sure. I think that's probably a, a ceiling sh- shot to shoot. 100%. There's, well, a, there's a lot of investments to make right now that I think like don't work for some teams, but work really well for teams that have cushion. Well, and that's why I feel like with Alave too, like it's kind of lining up where you get the really good back half of the schedule and it really is a buy low window where it's like you yeah. can get him at a discount, I think, if the team that sure. has him needs to buy wins currently. You know what's crazy actually? Uh, that reminds me a lot of DK last year started so slow. And I remember someone was telling me the window for him in the playoffs is awesome. You should go get him. And I'm like, there's just no way. And he ended up being super right. So sometimes yeah. <laughs> the ones that feel really uncomfortable are worthwhile. Yeah, agreed. Like those, you, you sometimes you just kind of got to roll the dice and hope that you hit on it. Gotta I, get have that puke. A, I have a Lave in my home league, and I've kind of been shopping him around just to see what's around. But researching for this video, I was like, eh, maybe I'll hold on to him. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. What you got? 
I, got old man. I had T Higgins, uh, so I had Alave as for for me. Like I guess there, um, I think it probably depends on my situation. If I want to win now, and that's the way I was looking at it. While his playoff schedule definitely is tough, um, I would probably trade for T. Higgins? I would trade for T Higgins right now. I think the Bengals team, the whole team is kind of in shambles, but the offense has actually looked a lot better the last like two to three weeks, and especially. And I think if T Higgins is healthy with Chase, this offense is humming enough to where T Higgins has a good floor, but I think he has a really good ceiling too. Yeah, I, I feel like. The thing is, if I can get him for an Alave, who right now, the playoff schedule's great, right? But I, I certainly don't feel good about right now. And h- how good is he even going to be if he has a great schedule? Like, I can get T. Higgins right now, who feels like, to me, a guy that's a pretty significant, like, high-end wide receiver, too, personally. Yeah. That, that too playoff lateral? schedule is tough. The Bengals? It is. What yeah, is it? it's Tennessee, who's currently they number one, yeah, Denver, number two, and Cleveland. Cleveland though is the thing, and the, the cha- I was going to say that the title game, if you make it there, the title the title game is Denver. I said them out of order accidentally. Okay, it's Tennessee, Cleveland, Denver. Yeah, Cleveland, so Cleveland's s- about as ca- cupcakey as a. Uh, although the defense is actually really good, they're always on the field and they're just. I will bad. say, like even if the defenses aren't that good, those are those are all three of those teams: Tennessee, Cleveland, Denver are like drag you down and make us make you play like forty one point total games with us like in the mud type of shit that's for sure kind of suck and i think he's a the reason i kind of w- wanted to bring him up because i feel like i'm really buying into what i'm seeing from t higgins yeah. but the playoff schedule is really scary yeah, so yeah. if you're forward looking um well i guess the question is for me look, with him are you buying him at the price that he's currently at right now where he's like a true wide receiver 15 t higgins yeah I'll, I'll just say like as someone that has him in our league i am about as optimistic about like his future perspective as as anyone but it is re- like even i mean you go back starting in week 10 it's like baltimore mm-hmm. the chargers a bye pittsburgh get one let up game dallas then it's tennessee cleveland what about the division you have yeah. evans and you have higgins would you want because i feel like Evans we actually is had this conversation yesterday is like in all leagues has just such strong name value it's like if you believe in higgins like you could probably get that lateral move done i, th- I think i could i actually feel like Evans is a specific case. I probably would lean Evans, um, a player just one for one. But I also – I think a lot of people don't like having – and it feels like they're wanting to do me the favor of take the Bucks receivers apart. I know that's probably what most people want, the ceiling of just one of them and get a ceiling of Higgins too. I really like the more I've had it. Uh, I think, like, if you have A.J. Brown and Smitty, I don't think you should be splitting those guys or be worried about that. I view it similarly to the high-end guys where – one of these receivers so far every week has been a boom receiver. So the other one, even if it is a bust, like Evans has busted, but Godwin hasn't even busted. So you're just you're you're way higher as a ceiling too. But not in, I feel like in most leagues they not a lot of people have both. Like cool. Someone Agreed. just has Evans. Agreed. I, well, I was saying if I was doing it on my team specifically there, I don't want to break that up. Whereas yeah. one for one, I might be more willing to just okay. make that swap right now. Yeah. So I think we both because we, we were talking about a possible trade yesterday. I think we both came to the conclusion that like Evans. Very slight edge to me over Higgins, but it's probably not enough that I actually I feel like I really want to make the swap. Just whatever. Yeah, Higgins and the Bengals feel a little bit different this year. Whereas like it always felt like okay, Higgins is a solid wide receiver too, but because their defense is allowing so many points, their offense is having to throw the ball so much that I don't really feel any like letdown games coming from the Cincinnati offense. And they've always like with Mixon on the roster. It always felt like they wanted to go run heavy and they wanted to give Mixon 20, 23, you know, carries a game where it feels like they're using Chase Brown and Zach Moss, but not not as like a run first team. They are like strictly a pass first team. And I'm like, yeah, Higgins looks really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think with Higgins too, like like to that one, JMO, I think it's, I think that you probably could get done. I feel like to me, it's probably, depending on how you feel about the players, it's a little bit lateral tier wise. But like maybe, maybe going back to a name that you brought up before, Andrew, like it, it, it might be a tough sell right now just based on, you know, the Ray Davis breakout, but like James Cook for T Higgins feels like a very fair that was, trade. That's a good one. Well, yeah. I had the, the four that I feel really comfortable in general would be so Mason I feel like right now if there's still high end value there I think he's a player that I personally am trying to move off of Mason now. makes sense and I'm, I'm thinking about sexy team like if James Cook doesn't get it over the edge for me does adding another little piece like if he offered me James Cook and Pop Douglas together for T Higgins that's a trade I seriously consider I don't know if I take it but like it, it would Pop feels like a flex play going forward and James Cook is obviously a, a rock solid RB2 RB1 weeks ahead. that that's that was going to be my next suggestion so let's say like I think this is in general to do right now where it's so reactionary, rightfully so, where meaning 
a player like Pop Douglas's value can change drastically in a week. I'm yeah. not saying that this shouldn't be the case, but like a guy like Darnell Mooney, who no one would even think to be rostering right now, is a very serious flex consideration. So JSN to me was in a similar tier as was T Higgins in the like process of starting the year. So let's say you wanted to get off of JSN. If I add you know a player like Mooney or to your point Pop Douglas to someone that needs to fill injury holes, I think those are the type of moves that you could probably get done. Yeah. What about someone like A Chain? Ooh. For Higgins? Straight up, yeah. You probably wouldn't need to throw in either side, I feel like. That's actually a good pivot. I, I would have a hard time doing that. It's funny because you're literally talking about two that we were discussing last night. I have we, we went through years. it last night trying to yeah. get something done, yeah. But I was I, like, I want I want Henry. Like, what, what pieces do I need to put together together? Yeah, he, don't, he was only shooting for the big guns. Well, the problem with HN is, like, I need running back production now, and, you know, I have to he, wait he for that. He feels like James Cook, but, like, a little bit better to where Agreed. you don't need that pop throw in. How are you guys feeling? I guess I get, that's a good question for how are you feeling about A-Chain. I think right now that's pretty wide. I'm, I guess, a little more optimistic that it's going to be better when two is back, but I'm curious what people think. I'm not I'm not buying A-Chain at the moment, and I think to answer your question, j if I have to sell my A-Chain to go get a T. Higgins, I'm not opposed to it. Yeah, I, I'm with Adam. I'm kind of bullish on him just because we saw, like, there's so much receiving upside with him as well. Agreed. Yeah. It's just – I just think too. I mean, we're talking about you we're know talking stuff we don't know. Like we don't selling so, Tyreek Hill based I would off say, of these variables. I think H has the same variables. Yeah, no, no, sure. no. I I agree. I kind of feel like okay, in our division where I'm two and four, you guys are five and one. Yeah, I'm like I think I gotta ride it out with T at this point. Like. A-chan feels a little bit too risky for me, but if I'm in your shoes and I have T. Higgins, that's a move I would probably make and be like, let me shoot for the 25-point games out of A-chan maybe every other week or something like that. I, I think that's the main thing. And it, it's really hard in this reactionary, like you've seen three weeks of Miami, now they're on a bye. It, it feels like forever ago when we saw when the offense was looking a lot better and A-chan was all of a sudden getting like him type of usage. That upside I still believe exists, although it feels think like it was Moster so long Do you think coming back could – influence that at all i, I think it definitely could it yeah. sounds like it could i'm yeah i'm still very skeptical i've seen him look like he was running in mud recently but There's so many and small i small variables. i also <laughs> feel like because i'm thinking about it too like you know my team in idiot league mates is two and four we've been banged up like there have been injuries it's we haven't gotten wins i want wins now yeah so like i'm yeah. willing to give you my a chan for that, the that's what i'm saying like I want where, the where i'm two and four i'm like i'm trying to get wins now as mm-hmm. well so that's why i want higgins but i would in a vacuum probably take a chan over higgins and, and you know what i think that's where a lot of leagues are uh, sorry, not least. A lot of trades are going to come down to you and how you're in your league. For me, I'm not comfortably, but I'm in first place four and two. And there's part of me with that scenario that wants to hold on to the HN experience yeah. possibly in two weeks. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to uh, stick in the same on the same team as T. Higgins. And I listed Chase Brown here. I listed him as a sell, though. And he's like, obviously, lesser tier. You know, we don't have to go haymakers to everybody. But bringing that schedule back up again. Week 10, they're at Baltimore. Week 11, they're at the Chargers. They have they have their bye after that. After that, they got Pittsburgh, uh, which is the number one run defense right now. And then they get one let-up game in week 14 at Dallas. Right after that, it's at Tennessee, Cleveland, Denver. And basically every single one of those teams is pretty much top 10 in uh, PFF run grade, EPA per play, per NFL pro stats. Like, that schedule is about as brutal as it gets for a running back, and Chase Brown's value is probably as about as high as it gets. So when I'm looking at moving Chase Brown, you can do something like, I think maybe targeting a dude like Jalen Waddle. If you have to add in something above that, that could make a little bit of sense. Maybe like Chase Brown plus, again, like a Pop Douglas or something like that. Maybe that gets on. As a Waddle owner, like what, what does that feel like in your mind? I mean, in my position, being a winning record, I just want to hang on to him. Yeah. But I think if you need wins, Chase Brown is going to give you the immediate satisfaction you're probably looking for based on a record thing. Kind of how the whole conversation is going, I'm going to stick to where I'm at, where I'm still yeah. kind of bullish on the Dolphins. But depending on that little kicker you throw in, maybe that does get it done if it's something enticing. I think another path you can go down is like Drake London has a great schedule, but maybe you go Chase Brown for like Darnell Mooney plus uh, a low-end RB2 or something like that, where Darnell Mooney also has that schedule for weeks 15, or, 16, 17. Chase Brown coming off a little bit of high beat. What about like BTJ? He's coming off a bad game. I like that. That feels. Th- that would be. I would. Something I, I would love done. that. I mean, I feel like I'm BTJ's experience as far as value is kind of shifting a lot. I feel like I somehow land in the middle, but right now I feel very high on him compared yeah. to most. I want to nominate one more player that I think he's not like one of my three, but I actually I put him in here for his like all right, whoever you trade Chase Brown for, maybe go to the team that has this player because he's at an all time low in terms of value. Calvin Ridley. Right now, oh, yeah. the last five weeks of the season, listen to this playoff, listen to this passing schedule. Washington, 
Jacksonville, Cincinnati, yep. Indy, Jacksonville again. Those are five bulletproof, like literally the bottom five Dude. passing defenses in the league in five straight weeks. Ridley, I think with the way that the locker room is playing out right now, like he's like, I need fucking early targets. I know people have been saying this kind of week in and week out. I think we start to see it from here forward. Ridley be like a main beneficiary of uh, of where the targets start to go. And again, D-Hop getting older, like he could be a trade candidate. Obviously, Buffalo kind of tightened up with Mark Cooper, so he won't go there. But he's someone whose value, like if you own Calvin Ridley, you're like, this guy is fucking dead to me at this point. So I think go to the Calvin Ridley owner, see if they have, you know, a uh, uh, an RB2 that you could go from Chase Brown down a little bit plus a Calvin Ridley maybe. I also I put him in my list move. too. Yeah. I, I think – I hope you're ready to go. We're going to need you to throw the football. Anyone could throw to Calvin Ridley on that schedule, dude. Agreed. That's ridiculous. Washington, Jacksonville, Cincy, Indianapolis, Jacksonville. I also think it's worth noting too, at, at that point, it might be Mason Rudolph under center, and that could probably be better for – Can't get worse, Calvary. I guess, is the only thing I could really put at this point. How yes. how far away are we from Levis being benched? I thought it was going to happen this week. However, a well, game or two away, I, it has to be. Yeah. I feel like him and Watson are the same thing. As soon as the owner agrees that it's dead, because it feels like there's no way the coaches are trotting him out like this is the best option. I mean, you literally got Brian Callahan looking at him on the sideline, saying, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like <laughs> cussing him out on the sideline, like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. yeah so, anyways, I I think like I want to throw Ridley in there because Chase Brown's not like a Drake London or Tyreek Hill level, so Ridley feels like a normal player to be in that like. Chase Brownish tier if you add another Get piece him thrown to into deals. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think if you have, like, especially if you're in a position of uh, you have excess, like, you pro- he's probably to be had on a team that's panicking easily for players that produce right now. Sure. Right. I, I think he's, like, so bottom of the barrel that where he is cheap is worth it, but, like, I don't know how much better, like, it can. Yeah, I'm not, he's not the centerpiece, but, like, I think he's a, a good team to go look at to see who has him and see if there's another piece that you yeah. really want and be like, okay, he's the, he's another piece to throw in there. Yeah, you just don't want to, just make sure you don't <laughs> overshoot that where you're pit trading away anything of significance. Got the right. whole box scores. No, 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 he's been so bad. But I don't <laughs> believe that he's bad as a player. No, I, no, and no, I believe either. the matchups getting better will be a little bit more. In Did his you favor. see the, um, Andy Holloway from the Fantasy Footballers, he put a video together of all eight targets from Ridley uh, last week. Or it's on Sunday? What did it look like? It, I didn't see it. No, no. were like catchable. They were zero. On, I don't even think balls. that they were going to Ridley. Like yeah. you couldn't even tell that <laughs> no, they the were fact going that, to Ridley. Like it got knocked, written down as a target. As a target, for him like insane. they weren't catchable. Okay. Yeah, I didn't so, see that, but it doesn't surprise. No, me. so like everybody was talking because there was a lot of conversation about like, oh, Ridley's complaining, but he still saw eight targets, bro. <laughs> he couldn't have caught those if he had fourteen foot long arms. Yeah, okay. like he wouldn't have caught those things. So yeah, so. yeah, it, it was bad. So you, yeah, you could write it off, but then again, it's like, how much better is it going to get? I don't know. I just he's definitely like a maybe he's just sitting on maybe the guy dropped him after this week like go pick him up if that's the case but otherwise he could be thrown in they as were, a nothing they were counting targets from like the defensive lineman batted the ball down at the line of scrimmage and they said target Calvin Ridley like that's, that's okay. what was happening so we'll pivot into something much different that's why I'd like did well, you hear, did you hear the, the uh, him like being interviewed after the game when he was like I need more fucking targets early on they were they were saying like oh you know you got all these targets and he's like when he probably didn't yeah. even realize no. that in they the box score no. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a good all those like yeah. batted down passes. He's like, now, when did those targets come? I am going to stay in Tennessee because my favorite mm. buy at the running back position is Tony Pollard. Okay. Now his price might have just gone up a tiny bit with the news with Tajay Spears, but looking at the playoff schedule, you already talked about it. Your championship weeks, 15, 16, 17, you got Cincinnati who's been ran upon Indianapolis and Jacksonville. Yep. And the se- uh, even the second half of the schedule, you talked about it. It's just yeah, Washington very, and Jacksonville before that. Very nice second it. half of the year. Tony, also to note, like they've already had their bye as well. They've already had and their bye, and he's playing well versus whoever they played really so far. Correct. Yeah. So, and, and here's the thing too: he hasn't really found the end zone this year, and he's still been producing. So, I think Tony Pollard, he's a guy you can definitely buy. He's going to be getting a shit ton of work here in the second half of the season, especially for the next couple of weeks while Tajay Spears is out. I think that's only going to open the door even more if he performs well with those. To where they're like, let's just keep feeding the hot hand to Tony Pollard. I think some. Potential moves that you could make if you're looking to sell high, which I would suggest selling this guy at the moment, DeAndre Swift. He is a guy that I'm willing to sell high at the moment. Maybe you can't sell him this week because he's on a buy, but he still has a good matchup against Washington, I think, next week, and another good one after that. There's been some performances from DeAndre Swift where he stacked upon him. I think you can maybe go get Tony Pollard based off of those performances that he put together. And Mm -hmm. if you want to go cross-positionally, Jamison Williams is a guy that I'd consider selling as well. Uh, There's no way anyone would do that, right? JMO for Pollard? I think you'd have to add something for sure. I think, think I think, so? I think yeah. you'd have to probably put the two of those guys together to make a someone 
country. You think I have to go Swift and JMO together to get? I think that. I don't think together. I think Swift is close. I mean, I'm just meaning I think those two as a package is something that would get done. I feel like either one of them is kind of. I might have to give real. off. I might have to give up T to get Tony Pollard. That's what I, I feel like. I guess it depends on how people view of Tony Pollard. Maybe it's wider than I think, but I feel I like could, he's, I could get he's that done. Right I, think, right now. I would Am offer I T to Swift JL. Higher than the community right now? Maybe. I just feel like people see the box score. They see the stacked. I th- no, I, I think I think Swift is valid. Yeah. I think Swift is valid. I think J Mo is definitely underneath. Done, straight up. I think J Mo's well, going to need another piece on top of it. Well, I think. So Swift. Uh, one thing about Swift, he was a player that I had, and I took off. We're only going to do three, but to the point, he has a horrific, horrible finish, and he's also had. When we look back, we could be looking at three of the worst matchups he had here, where he was top five each week. The worst defenses yeah. against the run. So I'm not. I believe in in Swift more than most, but I think if you can make that pivot, I would yeah. do it. To Tony Pollard, easy. So what I wanted to do too, just for the viewers at home, like when I am suggesting selling these guys, what I was trying to do was I was trying to sell away bad playoff schedules and buy good playoff schedules. So like Jameson Williams doesn't have a great playoff schedule. DeAndre Swift not a good one. Same with like James Cook and T Higgins, like we mentioned. Like those guys don't have good playoff schedules. But I just think if you can if you can flip Swift, who's been over performing for a guy like Tony Pollard. I, about, I'm doing that right now. This is like a big tier jump from Jameson. What about Diggs? Diggs or Tony? Yeah. I, I feel think like I'd be, rather his have playoff him. schedule, you he plays. Diggs, Diggs is hot commodity right now. I'd rather have Diggs the rest of the way, I think. Really? He's got a tough schedule at the end. Week 14 is his bye, so if you need to get in the playoffs right before, that I hurts. I hate that they fucking have Week 14 teams. buys are egregious. There's, a, there's six. There's six teams. Week 14 by Baltimore. Denver, well, Nick, Houston. shout out to you. Houston, Indianapolis, New England, and Washington. I'm a get a lot of firepower, dude. Jaden Daniels, game. Lamar Jackson, Derek. Hen- There's some goats in there. I uh, I'm, I'm cooked. Week four. Yeah. I'm trying to think about that from league mates' perspective because I have digs. If JL came and said you can have Tony Pollard, you have to give me digs. I think I'm declining him. I I think it's for sure just like star power value. Diggs is the better piece, but I think there are certain scenarios where you just gotta you just gotta give them the fifty one percent. I sometimes. wonder if the move here with Swift. Okay, so Swift. Now if he throws me a piece with Pollard, maybe a little flex wide receiver, I might listen to him. Yeah, that, that's where I think maybe that gets done. When you look at Swift's schedule, starting in Week Twelve, Minnesota, tough, Detroit, tough at Detroit, at San Fran, at Minnesota, Detroit again, Seattle. So, so you have Minnesota and Detroit twice <laughs> in a five week period. That's a tough schedule. However, <laughs> after the bye. Yeah. After the bye, they got Washington and Arizona. So his value might continue to go up. Yeah. Washington, Arizona. Maybe you want to try to sell intermittently between those weeks, too. I'm going to send JL right now, Swift for Pollard, and see what he says. Blind. Another one. I have Just a feeling. Blind one. I, ha- I have a couple guesses what he might say, but I, I'll tell you what he's going to say. He's not going to say a thing. He's just going to decline it. There you go. Yeah. Um, to I'm that point, doing. I think, like, Swift, I don't know. I, it seems like his production, while it's – the thing about it is I'm buying into a little bit is the offense as a whole is looking a lot better. So yeah, that I think fair. also, if you to your point with the two two more easy matchups, if people see it another couple of weeks, they might be willing to buy into it regardless of the playoff schedule. So his value could still rise a little bit. I guess obviously if we project that's gonna get declined. Like for Swift, is there other pivots <laughs> than Tony Pollard that are like actually investments you would make right now at the running back position? Moving Swift? Well. Yeah. Trading. Trading, trading away, away Swift, yeah. Because, like, I feel like he's actually kind of getting to a middle ground where the production and what I've seen from him is, okay. is solid enough to where I don't want to just give what about him like away. like Dobbs, Dobbins? I kind of like Dobbins as a buy. I think that's pretty potentially Because uh, you good. could get that done. That's a pretty potentially worthwhile bet. I feel like Dobbins' market's totally cool since those first two weeks. But that team's just going to run the That's ball. crazy. He, he just had 28 touches. I, I mean, he just beat the shit out of me in Deal or No Deal. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I, would, what, I, would, I would take Dobbins, what do you th- I think. What do you think about um, – Sorry, I was sending that off. What do you think about Rico Dowdle? <laughs> Obviously, he didn't look good on Monday. He had a good uh, a good game the week before that. But starting week 12, Washington, the Giants, Cincinnati, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Philly. I, I, th- I was actually... Th- Wouldn't do one for one, obviously, but I think he's a decent piece. The Cowboys, to start with, in general right now, are so up and down. But I was really starting to want to cheaply buy into him after the Pittsburgh game. Um, I think the usage was shifting to where you could see a backfield finally becoming somebody's. Yeah, yeah. and then Zeke started complaining about not getting touches, and Jerry started feeding his fat ass. I I, I well, want to believe goes move Swift for Zeke. I want to believe that's going <laughs> to not continue to happen, but it is Dallas. All right, um, Jerry, what are we doing, Jerry? While we're in Dallas, I'm just going to rip my third guy while we're here. Why not? Well, I figured someone had to put a tight end on the board. We did. Mm. Jake Ferguson. Love okay. it. Now, Jake Ferguson, low key, the goat. 
He's like tight end nine right now in fantasy. He missed a game and a half. Oh, we'll get there. Don't you don't you worry. So right now he missed a game. He is still, despite that, number four in targets, number five in receptions, number seven in yards, number five in just slot snaps for the tight end, seventh most deep targets, fourth in overall yak, seventh in yards per route run. With Fergie, he's got zero touchdowns on the year. That is where it's a problem. Last year, it was kind of an issue, too. He scored five, but he led tight ends in red zone targets. So you're like, oh, it's going to regress. Hasn't regressed at all. But we also saw at the end of last year, like when all that regression was going to come, he exploded for a three-touchdown game in the playoffs. With no idea if Cooks is going to come back like anytime soon, I think the way that this offense is shaping up, like I just talked about Rico Dowdle, but at the end of the day, Dak is second in the NFL in passing attempts right now. Like that's not going to slow down anytime soon. Listen to their schedule starting in week 12. Washington, the Giants, Cincinnati, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Philly. I mean, in terms of like a passing offense, it doesn't get much better than that. So with Ferguson, I think a lot of the times you're not going to be able to go one for uh, like one for one on like opposite positions because yeah. people need their tight end. So with Ferguson, I'm looking at pieces where it's like Andrews, like Andrews and Joku, Laporta, even McBride. Like if you can go, uh, if you can get Ferguson and a piece moving away from McBride, fine with that. The other ones, I think you can probably get a piece or uh, you, you might have to put an extra piece on top of it. Yeah. Like in Andrews, I keep going back to like a Pop Douglas and maybe that's overstating what you actually have to give up. But like if you have Andrews, Andrews plus a Pop Douglas, Andrews plus a Shakir maybe Josh to go Downs. get. I don't, I don't think I'd give up Josh Downs. You know I how had much to throw I love the name it, but, out there for well, you. But Andrews and Njoku Laporta yeah, I, or like Ferguson I have, with pieces on the edge of that. I think like that, that makes sense. Like I have Njoku. So let me ask you, like if you were going Njoku, obviously you just you're saying you do it straight up. No question. I would take Ferguson over Njoku for right. sure. Yeah. I'm me saying too. what would the pluses from that specific one be if you were going to add I, like I, th- I think a, a pop makes sense I think uh I'm trying to think of like running backs I don't think Javante gets that done uh, I think Bigsby. I think that's fair like I'm just I'm trying to think of guys in that range uh that uh, kind of test your needle up on the way I, I would I would be fine giving away Ninjoku and Tank for Ferguson I don't know if this is bold or a hot take or I'm just gonna say it anyways but I really do like Jake Ferguson. I didn't even know that you had him on here. I, I truly believe that he's probably a top three tight end the rest of the season. I would say top five, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he finished top three. I think, like, Bowers and Kelsey are yeah. clear, like, one and two, and then behind them it's, like, whoever scores touchdowns weekly. I, I think it's between, like, Ferg and McBride for that fourth spot. Maybe Kittle. I don't like, think people look oh, at – Oh, God. yeah, never mind. Kittle, Kittle, Kittle's Kittle, that's top where, three. That's Those where are I the th- top three. That's where I think the, the thing with Ferguson to me is uh, – I think it's a good conversation because if he ends, I think what he has to do is get closer to those three than actually be number four. Kittle, Kelsey, Bowers. Sense. Like, yeah, right now the difference in Kelsey, if if we're projecting for him to take over with Rashi and all the targets, but like Bowers, for example, and what uh, he's doing with Kittle, the boom weeks, it, they're, those are winning you weeks. The other guys, I feel like the differences are minimal. So I think if Ferguson gets closer to those three guys, he's 100% worth buying cheap. I, yeah. just, I have Ferguson in my home league, and I – Literally feel like it's a set it and forget it. Don't worry about it. Tight end every single week. Like I just, I don't even worry about my tight end position. I just plug them out there. Exactly. I think that's, yeah, I think I look at it the same way, but Ferguson, if you can, if you can get it cheap enough, I think if the pluses are cheap, they're like tank, like they're ancillary pieces. Once I start getting to maybe like, I, w- I was going to say Chase Brown, where are you at there? Chase Brown for Ferg straight up? No, if you add in Chase Brown to Njoku. Feels steep, right? Feels a little expensive. That's what I'm, that's what I'm that's just like not really in on Njoku at all right now. So like, and maybe I'm overlooking what how a, good of like a random PC is it, I guess at tight end, but I think any, that's fair. I think I still I think there I'd probably lean Chase Brown. You have to pick one the rest of the year. Ferguson or Kincaid? Ferguson. Ferguson. Kinc- Not even a question, the right? Kinc- yeah. The Kincaid thing. I didn't is, even put him on there because I was like, he's could a sell pits for Ferg. I doubt it. No. no. I think might, if I offered that to Sexy, he turns it down. In a I think second, you got to add. These are all. Those are. He's another tight end that you probably have to add a little bit to get to Ferg. I think and Joku like maybe might be sneaky cheap with production wise. For there's nothing else there now. But I still would rather yeah. have Ferguson, no question. I'm just, like, scared about investing into that offense at all. I wouldn't go buy him. I'm just saying, I think the point is Chase Brown, that level, like, I get to a top 20 running back ish range, I'm out on just the tight end position pivoting into it. But if yeah. I can go for guys that are maybe weekly flex considerations, if that's what the piece that I have to add, I'd be willing to do it. Yeah, I just love that schedule down the stretch. And I'm like, if they're all in the same kind of tier, like, you know, Andrews, Laporta, and Joku, McBride, you're all kind of look at the, looking at them the same. Like, none of them have given you boom weeks this year at all. Like, some of them had 50-yard touchdown games, whatever, but really none of them have gotten above that. And I would rather attach myself to 
the Dallas offense, then the Cleveland offense, then the Arizona offense. Obviously, Laporta and Andrews aren't good offenses, but like Ferguson's role, I think, is more secure than Andrews is. Uh, Laporta hasn't shown much. I think Laporta is actually like a decent buy candidate right now too. If you didn't have that fifty-yard touchdown, yeah, that, that was, was one catch. catch. That was the only catch of the day. Yeah. So um, yeah, the schedule is just really intriguing, and I think like he's such a rock-solid floor play with potential multi-touchdown games. Yeah, the, the schedule is super nice. The way Dallas in general, though, like while I certainly agree with you, point it was crazy how last week. The Cleveland offense and their offense was the same picture. Like yeah. the, Dallas is so weird up, up and down, but that those, those matchups are hard to beat. Yep. That's five weeks in a row, you said? That's six weeks? Six weeks in six a row. Weeks. Starting week 12. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I want to talk about I'm just so excited. David Montgomery because he uh, actually got traded in your idiot league mates. I wish it was to me. I was going to try to get – I was going to try to send an offer to Tony. At the point, I realized there was – he's had like four better offers than I could put together, <laughs> and yeah. he got a pretty – crazy deal done but Montgomery to me is um is, he's a problem for a lot of things everyone that you're playing against in fantasy Demont's scary as hell but he's also kind of made Gibbs not nearly the high end upside yeah. I feel like Montgomery's barring health a guy that I'm like locking into potentially top five weekly and I so feel good. it's I can't say that about almost anybody at the running back position right it's now. just like the 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 goal line back in an offense that's that fucking productive is just yeah. So valuable, and he's a good running back, too. He, if, if Gibbs wasn't there, we would look at him like he's Derrick Henry. Well, the thing is, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty like much. Probably. You're not wrong. I think, like, that's been part of the problem is we, we, there's excuses for why he's not going to be good ever since his years in Chicago, and he just continues to produce for fantasy teams. Mm-hmm. He's playing like he's needing a contract right now in a big way. He's he balling just his got ass off. He just extended him, yeah. I mean, the, like, that's the point. He's a top five back now, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, so, he's – this morning, how 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 is the trade? Gut in. Do you want to talk about the trade that? Actually oh no no, happened? go ahead. I was just, I was gonna say what kind of like how bullish are you guys on him? Gut and Tony had a one for one trade off position. Tony offered Monty for DK straight up. I think that's super fair. I think that I, would, thought it was I think cross positionally. Yeah, I think it's trade. a flat trade, really good across the board, and something I probably would have done if I was Gut. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Gut, so Gut's team has. Elite receivers and needs running back. You got Jamar Chase, Deontay Johnson, DK, DK. DK. Christian Kirk, Josh Downs. But like right. having Josh Downs now as like a replacement, for, yeah, I, yeah, that's a good with trade. That, with that guy, you got DK as your set wide receiver too. That's a tra- oh, pivot worthwhile. I think DK right now maybe he's cooled, but if that's the case, you shouldn't be. They're, the target volume he's getting is crazy in that offense. Yeah. Okay, so who are you – like you said, you'll, you'll buy Demont, but he's – I mean, he's coming So, off let me ask you guys right now. Tony and I J- discussed trade for Demont yesterday. Would you guys right now, Marvin Harrison Jr., where are you guys at? Demont. I, I, w- I would say so, but, like, I feel like sticker shock for people. A lot of people with Mar- Marv are – It kind of hit me with sticker shock zero when you said that. Help. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have Marv, right? I'm telling you right now, everybody that has felt- Marv is so not living in reality. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That might be fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, that's what everyone keeps asking me. Like they send me trades with Marvin. I'm, I'm like, dude, this is, isn't even dynasty. I don't what know. are we doing? I don't know. I feel like I, yeah, maybe that offense is just not All right. attractive. It's, it's not one that you want to really <laughs> invest into right now. The, the thing is, Marv, I guess from the standpoint of not just being such a great talent, but you were, you just told he's going to get elite targets. I haven't seen that consistently Three. enough to be wanting to mess down that path. Okay. I, I would just want to say, if you have Marv and you're scared, Montgomery I, seems like an easy pivot, but. If you could do that, I would easily shoot that off. I don't know that you get it done, but uh, there's a, these are I some feel guys. Like that's maybe someone like if Jack shut off that to Tony, Tony might have done that. I, that's fair. Like you there know are what? people. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm I'm, I'm saying it <laughs> like it's from the hip. So yeah. maybe it Marvin, like crazy. Chase Brown, actually t- Jack has Marvin Chase Brown. He probably should have yeah. offered that. Now these guys, I think I would do straight up, and then you probably have to add a piece, and I'd be willing to. But uh, what about adding a piece to a guy like Josh Jacobs? Um, I didn't offer that actually to Tony because I wanted to be able to pair Jacobs and Montgomery together. I mean, I, I would definitely prefer Monty. Just depends kind of what that throw in is. Definitely. So, uh, that, uh, good, great point. So, what about if you're if the throw in is Addison? That was steep for me. I think Addison probably Addison might break the deal for me because I have Sam Darnold. Uh, but like, like JSN. I, I, these are guys one. I'm Pickens using. Pickens is Pickens in that was, same tier. Pickens, Pickens, I would have done that probably. Yeah, Pickens, JSN. Uh, I think like I don't. I doubt there's much value there. Christian Kirk, like especially a guy like him, if you can get off the name. I think that's there. fair. I think those are fair fair packages though. Would you there? Uh, would you would make that trade for Demont if you could, though, right? If you had the ability to, to p- make that pivot to Montgomery, you prefer him there, or you think it's just a fair trade in general? Which, which uh, like those add add in pieces of a Pickens or a Christian Jacob. Kirk? Yeah, I would have probably given him Jacobs and Pickens for Demont before you okay. trade him. Yeah, I think that's the type of deal you can get done two for one. Um, mm-hmm. I think the I think the difference between for me anyway, Jacobs and Montgomery is sizable yeah. a lot more than what the market. Oh, says. for sure. Yeah, like I I think that. 
Everyone in the league was trying to trade for Monty. Yeah. Like Tony's the only one. Yeah, Tony just loves know. trading his best players. The, well, the thing like, is, I wanted to get in there, but I have, I'm the one that has Gibbs, so I'm like. I, the I reason is, yeah, yeah. I think it's hard. It's probably gonna be hard to trade for a guy like that. But Tony was he's in shambles with injuries. Uh, he's really just trading every week to try to secure a dub. It's like somehow it worked out. He literally said that on the podcast. Today. It was pretty yeah. awesome. Uh, what about? Let me ask you guys this: Where are you guys at on CMC? I don't think that you're gonna get it done straight up one for one. But like, if a, if someone has Let's do access, a CMC trade right now. I probably I'm mean, sure we could talk it out I talk a lot of the trades I haven't made one yet what, what would you be willing to add to CMC to get Montgomery and would you like where are you at on CMC right now I feel like his market is awful you gotta keep Mont. I just I can't even imagine discussing trade for CMC at this moment <laughs> you have to go back to that Addison tier and better I think I would be okay trading for CMC if I was in you know it's a it's an obvious statement but if I was in a really good position where I had cushion like right. I would obviously two and four I'm never trading for C Mag makes no fucking sense even you at five and one when you have two teams surrounding you at five and one I don't think really makes sense if you're five and one where the next closest team is like maybe three and three or something like that then you give yourself some leverage I think we see C Mac back this season I do too I think it'll probably be three more weeks maybe yeah. when's our when's our bye week 10 uh I think there were, or maybe week nine or something like maybe. that I was just looking at. All I know is the last report that we heard from Christian was that he is projecting early November. But obviously, the projections with San Francisco so far this year have been nothing we can even rely on. Okay, so I think like week ten, more likely, maybe week week eleven. Yeah, maybe like week eleven, we see him. Okay, I I feel like uh, if you have four weeks of CMC though, like weeks twelve to sixteen, that's like worth (laughs) whatever the fuck you give up. Yeah, I, I think I think the reason I bring it up is because. Probably you're not in the position. Most teams aren't in the position, but if you do have excess, is is CMC's upside worth chasing for a player of real consequence right now? Or if you're, are you only going to lowball offers for CMC? I'm only lowballing, and I'm a scumbag, so I'm just going to do that. <laughs> I guess obviously, if you're in this situation, you have that you can't do anything other than lowball, right? Yeah, because everything is low. That's the right whole now. squad, but yeah. no, I mean like <laughs> I'm buying Bo Nix, baby. That's what I'm doing right no, now. I mean, I, th- I just think it's an interesting discussion. If you have CMC, you have guys like Marv that are underperforming. Th- those are the type of big names. I think that I would be trying to pivot into a guy that was drafted way later, but I don't, who cares about that anymore? Yeah. Draft capital smash. Give me one more. My last guy, since I got you want my last guy. No, I haven't got my last guy out either. Okay, go ahead. I'll go someone, with someone do something. Oh. I'm going to go James Conner. Oh. James Conner for the Arizona Cardinals. Playoff schedule for them is nice. New England, Carolina, the Los Angeles Rams, all defenses that we've been able to run against. Now, right now, you might be able to buy low on him, too. Just there's a little bit of an ankle injury. Seems like it's been pretty hush-hush. I have potential sell highs. I keep throwing around the name DeAndre Swift. He's just a guy I'm trying to sell high, but I think that— You would move Swift for Conner? I think I would consider it, yeah. We might need to talk about Swift after And this. then um, another name, cross-positionally, I think if I had Jordan Addison, I would move Jordan Addison for James Conner right now. Interesting. I don't know. I, I, think that's a, I think that's a trade that you could get done. You think so? I think so. I think it's fair. I think if I offered I that to Sexy. Connor sexy. owner wins. You think so? I don't, yeah, I, don't, I think Connor owner is going to want to keep. I, now, I, I do think Addison's playoff true. schedule is horrendous. Uh, oh, I did not know that. He has, let's see, his uh, playoff schedule right here is... Kick it off first week of the playoffs with Chicago. Then he has Seattle and then Green Bay. I wouldn't say it's horrendous. It's not awful, but it's not it's, good. It's not great. But I'd be willing to sell that schedule to buy James Conner, who has like the fifth easiest running back schedule. Yeah, in the I think on on paper the swap makes sense. And I do think if I offered Addison to sexy for Conner, he would definitely think about it. The longevity scares me a little bit down the stretch of the season where he's already now dealing with the ankle injury and he's a game he's a guy who misses three to four games almost every single year. And we're already into week seven where it's like, okay, this is breakdown time for James Conner. Is the sharp move to go buy Benson for cheap <laughs> with no, that playoff schedule? He won't be a, he won't be like a every down back. He won't have Conner's role if yeah, Conner goes Benson down. Benson looks so bad, honestly. I'm definitely down to buy, buy Conner. I just think. It makes sense. I, I think it's a little risky. I'm a little scared. I think the I think the kind maybe of maybe I'll get send risky that, to win the championship, right? No, you're right. That's you're right. true. You got to go for it. I think the that conversation in general actually was something I was going to talk about was a lot of these R, RB pivots earlier on in the year. All, all the running backs aside for Christian McCaffrey, who I drafted, were healthy, right? So yeah, every week it's like these guys get more banged up. There's little stuff that happens, and that's where I think there's going to be so many guys that we don't even think about. Sean Tucker was the running back one last week. Oh, nope. guys are going to be available on the wire that you may not think are even. You may not even know play football that are going to yeah. actually get roles down the stretch. So if you can make a pivot out of the running back position, if you can afford to, I, I'm I'm typically okay with it unless it's like 
the goat tier. So what he's back. saying is the sharpest of sharpest moves is to actually go pick up Amari Di Mercado from the waiver wire. <laughs> That's all right. Enough. Well, it, not I wasn't going to go that Enough. far, but let me ask you guys, where are you feeling about this player? I think a cheap, still a cheap purchase. He did not play last week. I think the offense is really gross as a whole. What about Jacoby Myers for a sneaky buy and redraft? Right now, he's actually, uh, on average, inside the top 12 on targets. They just lost. He wasn't technically in the way of him in targets, but he's definitely gone in the future. I think the Trey Tucker thing is not a role that's scaring me from Myers' production. Uh, I think it's going to be a safe floor, potentially, that you can get for free. If O'Connell's their quarterback, I want nothing to do with it. I yeah. think the only Raider I really want is Bowers, and then I'd, I'll listen to playing Madison just based off of the war of attrition of the running back position. Yeah. So, so you guys are totally out on – I guess on, it I, – like, I could so buy he, into the narrative, like, Devontae's gone, but, like, I think it comes down to, like, who we're talking about. Okay, yeah. Well, that's what, that's why I guess I'm saying some pivots that would you be willing to make or who would you take on this side? Keon Coleman right now after what we saw with I would, Amari? I'd rather have Jacoby. Keon's I would take Jacoby there, yeah. I think that's a pivot that right now it says you can get done. Um, what about right now Roma doing Uh Give me Rome. I have I have sat Rome in that flex spot like it's just I'm just waiting for the he's had one good week and the re, when he's bad he's bad man and yeah. Keenan Allen's production I'm not gonna say that Rome's dead but Keenan Allen's production this last week scared me a little bit yeah I'll they're they're, they're just a tough trio to really especially when they're at full health to predict he had two all. targets this last week because yeah it's it's like I mean, he started off strong like in the first half he had like six or seven points or whatever two for fifty or something like that two for forty and that was it yeah and I was like okay he's, he's gonna have like a relatively big game the problem is I don't know it's it's almost like the Green Bay Packers offense but with more volatility week to week where you're not exactly exactly sure who's gonna eat like you expect it to be DJ Moore is the one but this offense could always go out there and put up like thirteen or fourteen points where you don't really expect that from the Packers ever for sure I think Rome is probably of the people I put on here the most expensive and you may not have to do that maybe I'm I'm thinking about it a little bit wrong too is like if I'm giving you Rome to buy Jacoby Myers. Like, I feel like I'm trading a guy that I'm probably keeping on my bench most weeks for a guy that's going to be on my bench most weeks. And when I'm thinking about that, it's like, give me the guy with upside over the guy that I think just has a safe floor. Yeah, like, I feel better about Rome in my lineup in a good matchup, even even, if it doesn't come through. Even I'm thinking about, like, my flex spot, and, like, it ain't good. But, like, I'm plugging in Tyler Lockett, and I think I'd rather play Tyler Lockett than Jacoby right now. I don't think there's I think I'd go Jacoby at that point. I, I mean... But, like, yeah. Tyler Lockett's not a bad play, though. I, no, but so he's, I'm just saying he's, like, my flex play. Jacoby Myers, I think, is going to be cheaper in a lot of leagues than Tyler Lockett. I, I need Minshew back under center. How about Rashad trade. White or Jacoby Myers right now? Ooh, that's, that's a pivot I would make. Really I think I think that name cache for – I think Jacoby Myers carries no name cache, and I think Rashad White so might. so uncomfortable. <laughs> I hate that really Rashad does. White. I hate him. God. <laughs> this is a great way. To I think it's a great I, way to end the show. Nobody wants is. either side. I it hate is. him. I, I think th- I would still lean Rashad. Dang. What's crazy is Andrew. You. One of the quotes that stuck with me today was, <laughs> "I need production right now," and you're one t- trying to sell me on Rome. That feels so tough. I mean, no one in this tier is giving you any sort of production or consistency. <sighs> I mean, I'll, I'll probably take Jacoby over Rashad, but God damn, that is so gross. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the point is for sure, Jacoby could be a toss in in a lot of your deals. Sure. If you're looking to get a deal done, you're okay. not, you're close. You can throw Jacoby in there and probably doesn't affect it. Uh, last piece. What about Lazard or Jacoby after Ooh, the top 40 for rest of Lazard's the year? on that, waivers. Man. That's no, to me. That's easy. <laughs> Myers now with Devontae. Coming yeah, me in. too. I, I, if you're not looking, as you'd like to say, you're looking where the puck is going. You're, might be on the Lazard side of that. Yeah, most people probably don't know that Devontae went to the Jets yet, right? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get those idiot league mates. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Nick had a Nick got him on a photo shoot immediately. He had him on the thumb. You like that? Nicky edits. I don't even know where I found that. I that saw crazy. that on a uh, ESPN or something yeah, like Bleacher that. Yeah. Room. Every every website yeah. took the took same, the same photo, the same exact photo, and, photo and like we don't yeah. give a fuck about cops. Yeah, What's yeah. crazy is this wasn't a conspiracy when Adams was already on the jet and the picture was already out before the trade was released. Yeah, <laughs> that was actually a real photo. <laughs> them two took together a practice a few Last days week. before. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap it up there. That is uh, some dudes that we think you should go out and buy or sell and hopefully some suggestions that you can go take with you and make at the moment. I think one of the easiest resources or ways to look at the schedule, if you just type in NFL schedule grid on Google, ESPN actually has a good one where you could look at like a big picture of who everybody's playing each week, and that will also help you kind of get a better look at um, – 
guys that are on your team and guys that you should be trading away. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit the button that looks like this down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and we'll be back for our rankings videos this upcoming Wednesday, obviously. All right. Hi. Hi. Smoke cheese.